the NBA is going to try to come back and finish out this season in one way or another. That leaves many questions for all of us. One question we do not have to worry about is if LaMarcus Aldridge is going to come back and play. The answer is no. Go to ProjectSpurs.com, read the latest article by Paul Garcia that dives into what that means for the Spurs and what all the different scenarios are for the Spurs in those final eight games. Well, this isn't the first time that the Spurs went into battle without their big gun this season. Actually, 10 games this year without LaMarcus Aldridge. Six of those games came in the final seven, so the Spurs really did finish out this season playing without LaMarcus Aldridge. Now, any way you want to slice it, losing LaMarcus Aldridge is going to hurt two big reasons why. One, he's a walking bucket. This year he was putting up 18 points per game, 18.9 matter of fact, shooting 49% from the field, taking about 15 shots per game in about 33 minutes. He played 53 games on this season. He was able to get his sweet spots going for us many games in and out this year and he was just a consistent rock for us whenever he was on the floor. He even started taking a couple threes later on in the season. What LaMarcus Aldridge was doing especially well this year was defending that rim. 87 blocks on the season. To put that in perspective for you, last year was his career high at 107, 20 blocks away. The year before that, he had 90. The year before that, 88 blocks. And he had 87 on this year. He was currently 10th in the league when we let out on hiatus. 14 double doubles, 7.4 rebounds per game. And that's really where the San Antonio Spurs are going to miss LaMarcus Aldridge is on the defensive side of the ball. Because the way that he was able to protect the rim and change shots is on another level. And without that, that might be one of the biggest holes that we try to fill moving forward into Orlando. LaMarcus Aldridge is out. Well, that means that DeMar DeRozan can take more shots and score more points. No, sorry to tell you, that's not what happens. Though, was able to keep his 17 points per game. His efficiency went down just a little bit. I'll tell you what really did happen. DeMar DeRozan put it on his shoulders to get everyone else involved. His assists went from 5.3 to 7.8 in those games. It's a testament to his character as a guy who didn't want the extra shots, but wanted everyone else to get better. Now, DeJounte Murray, on the other hand, was able to take these opportunities and run with it. You can tell that the Spurs really let him take advantage of LaMarcus Aldridge not being in the starting line lineup with him. DeJounte Murray, you know, he went from taking 8.9 shots per game to 13.2. Now, he was able to keep his efficiency at 47 percent so his shot selection didn't change he kept taking a lot of really good shots at the rim mid-range and so on but he cranked it up a notch uh when lamarcus aldridge went out Derek white in particularly his stat sheet went up in all of the ways that you want it to not in the points column but he got more steals blocks assists rebounds per game he was just being more aggressive and getting everyone else involved and trying to impact the game in other ways besides that weren't on the stat sheet you can tell that the sense of urgency was there in the last seven or eight games of the season when both of our bigs were out i mean rudy gay turned it on too we were waiting on rudy gay all year and, and he came up when we needed him patty mills was our rock all season i've been saying he's been our third best player all year long nobody benefited when lamarcus aldridge went out like trey lyles did but what really pushed Trey Lyles out of the atmosphere was when Jakob also went down against Orlando. He was shoved into a situation and we put all the weight on his shoulders, all the minutes on his shoulders at that position. And he went berserk. I'm going to have to put this stat differential up so you can try to help me find what planet Trey Lyles landed on. When he's playing with LaMarcus Aldridge, for the most part in this season, that's a huge sample size, 57 games. He's averaging about five attempts per game three threes a game two and a half threes a game so he's not getting a lot of attempts when the marcus aldridge is in the game he's shooting about you know 43 percent from the field about 36 percent from three you know not too bad on on either side but he's averaging about 5.5 points per game when lamarcus went out and Jakob went out he went nuts and the spurs let him go so he went from taking five shots per game to taking 12 shots per game his efficiency went up from 43 to 46 his three point percentage went up from 33 to 44 he started taking almost six threes a game so he basically doubled his 
his workload. He he went berserk on the stat sheet as well. About five and a half, five point eight rebounds per game, a one and a half assists, one and a half steals, a block. You know, all under two personal fouls a game, and averaging fifteen point six points per game. He went from five point five points to fifteen point six. So Trey Lyles did show that he can carry the load offensively when LaMarcus Aldridge is out, and he can do it efficiently. But he definitely went berserk in these last six games of the season. Last six out of seven games of the season. This next part is my favorite though. With the talent that we have on the perimeter, on the offensive side of the floor, we need lanes. We need lanes to the basket. DeMar DeRozan needs them. DeJounte, Derek White, Lonnie, Lonnie Walker. All these players thrive when they're on their way to the rim. And Trey and Jakob take that as a personal responsibility to make that happen setting hard screens, getting other teams bigs out of the way. They make it all happen for the San Antonio Spurs and that's gonna be key if we're gonna get into the paint when we go into Orlando and into the future for the San Antonio Spurs. So let's look at a few examples where our big struggled when LaMarcus Aldridge was out. Well, first let's talk about Utah. You're seeing the guards <laughs> on the on the Utah Jazz get anything they want right what we are also going to see now is the shot chart comparison for Utah against the Spurs in a game with LaMarcus Aldridge and a game without LaMarcus Aldridge I want you to take a look at those numbers of points in the paint field goal percentage for for Utah and just look at all those green dots you know that that, that tells the story right there now what we're going to see here against Chicago is Zach Levine kind of targeting Jakob uh, Pertl in crunch time but here you can see where uh, a guard can really take advantage of of Jakob on the perimeter if, we're, if they're creating the switches um, Zach Levine does a good job of just targeting him here and just going right at him now I like the one-on-one -on -one matchup of Jakob and Zach Levine. I think this night was just Zach Levine's night. I think Jakob can do just as well of a job as contesting shots out in the perimeter and getting beat and recovering back to the rim as anyone else on our squad. But this night, uh, it hurt us. And Jakob almost made a game-winning block here at the end. Circle, beating by a step, runs into the lane, shot no, and a whistle, and a foul. Whistle. The ref made a call on that. I don't see it. I see verticality. Um, but Jakob can hold his own, you know, being switched up on guards, off ball screens, and things like that. Jakob does a pretty good job. Now, Indiana might have a top four front court in the NBA in, in, in Sabonis and Turner, in my eyes. Uh, Trey Lyles does not back down to this challenge here. Um, Here's a stretch where Sabonis goes at Trey for about three, four possessions in a row, and he does get the better of Trey Lyles, and he gets the bucket to go, but Trey makes him work and makes him earn every single inch of those buckets, and that's the kind of effort that we need, and when Trey Lyles, Lyles played a lot of small ball five for the Spurs here at the tail end of the season, so you're going to see him get taken advantage of now and then and that's kind of where team defense comes into play in having his help side and and, and trying to, to help him out when it comes to him guarding big guys so we're going to need trey lyles and the team to communicate well because lamarcus does do a really good job of communicating through all this and he's just a defensive leader that we're really going to miss Why don't you head over to ProjectSpurs.com to check out more of their great Spurs content. Also, you can head over to RobDrahoJr.com backslash Bucking Spurs to check out everything else I got going on. Thank you for watching. Make sure to click the subscribe button down below, the like button down below. Hit that little notification bell for more Spurs content coming your way. I'm glad you, I hope you enjoyed this film room. Go Spurs, go.